is Pam Bryson, who will be joining us. So Pam Bryson going to come down shortly after Paul Petcho, Pam's second year. Edger works for Bank of America. And she went over in 2011. So Pam, Pam's one of those examples of, uh, and actually one of those rare examples of, did it once, took a year off, came back and did it again. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, uh, most of our people who are repeat edgers do it at least two years in a row, uh, if not three or four, or they do it two years in a row and decide they're not going to do it. Uh, uh, there's not many examples that I can give you where we have somebody who did it one year, took a year off, and came back. You can see Paul Petcho inching his way down there. Kayla Miller has landed. Matt O'Byrne has landed. And we're going to try to get them in here and on the headsets and talk to them about their experience. Paul working his way down. Another look at Pam there as she gets ready. You can see the uh, walkie-talkie on Pam. They yep. literally, you have an earpiece or they talk you down on the walkie-talkie and they help you out. And I, a lot of people have said that's really one of the reassuring parts. Yeah, I would definitely need somebody to walk me through what I was doing. Words of encouragement, always a good thing, but uh, more on the technical side, the take your hand and do this. Take right. that other hand and grab that. Well, we've heard a couple people say that they locked up on the way down, which yeah. happens if you go too fast. It's a safety measure. And, uh, and then that, knowing yeah. that that was okay. Right. That, that yeah. was, I guess, supposed to happen. Or Yep. They go over, uh, yep. I forget who it was. I think it was somebody said they go over, you know, five things that could go wrong. Yep. And uh, that that's one of them. So uh, that's good there. Uh, but here we have Paul and Pam making their way down. And we've had a couple more additions. And so we're, uh, you know, we've actually had a couple of people sign up today, which is a great thing. Wow. And, again, if you didn't sign up for today, want to do it next year, go to SODE.org, click on the Over the Edge banner, and it'll direct you to the landing page of the event where you can then click on it and then sign up for next year's event. We don't need the $1,100 today. We need 50 to secure your spot, and that gives you an entire year, something we've done new. Uh, in the past couple years, we haven't opened up the online registration until uh, late summer, early fall, and uh, this is something we thought, you know what, we're going to have this audience of what's closing in on 2,000 people uh, from around the country, and uh, of course, we assume the majority of those 1,000, 2,000 people are here in the state of Delaware with easy access to be able to do this event, and so... Uh, we're hoping that they uh, might be interested in signing up, and we've given them the opportunity to do that today. Again, if you're on Twitter and want to send a message to somebody, hashtag over the edge DE. Let's get it trending for these last two hours. And uh, send us info at SODE.org if you'd rather send us an email. Wish somebody luck. Just put in the subject line who you are, where you're from, and we will try to make sure to get uh, your information uh, out to the people as they come down. Jimmy, I'm going to take a step away for a second. I've Go got to handle it. somebody, uh, a news person that's here, and I will be back in less than five minutes. Excellent. So thank you very much uh, for taking over at this point for a couple minutes. And no problem, I'm sir. I'm also going to try to track down Kayla. Yeah, go and, get her. I, I don't uh, think Matt. she's going anywhere, but go <laughs> get her. Thank you, sir. All right. On your screen right now, you see Pam getting a picture before we go down. Let's check in on Paul. As there's Paul Pet Show. And you hear Eye of the Tiger uh, playing right now. So DJ is doing his job. And Paul getting a little hung up there. Well, it does not look like he's a big fan of not being able to touch the wall. As Paul coming down on that right side, the gold rope are our indications of the sides there. Gold on the right, blue on the left. You see the blue in your shot right now dangling there to the right of that other orange rope. And it's dangling because Pam has made her way over. And we'll see Paul through the rest of the way here. As the belayers down below guide him away from that lip. I want to thank you for joining us here. Our first ever live cast of Over the Edge here in Delaware. Still waiting for confirmation if this is the first live stream start to finish of this event ever. And if so, honored to be a part of that. Because uh, that's very impressive. 
And as we see Paul Petschel making his way down, hands up. And he is pulling that lever and kind of making his way back down to the ground. Almost there. And Paul Petcho is home free. Smile. It's an uneasy one. But it's a smile all the same as Paul Petcho is now down. And that means that we are waiting for Pam Bryson, who is on her way down. Here's a look at Pam all the way at the top. So we see a good little crowd down there at the landing zone. Look back up top as Pam has just made her way down. And so the text there up top still talking her through it. Is there you take another look at where she is in the grand scheme of things. All right, and just heard that Cynthia will be joining Pam when she is done. So Pam Bryson making her way down right now. That's uh, Cynthia White here up top, who's currently getting ready. Cindy White's a uh, longtime volunteer for Special Olympics when we used to have uh, community programs, which have now become area programs. She was one of the program directors. Not sure if she's gone over before or not. I don't have it in my notes, but we'll find that According out. According to the, the color uh, color code coding here, uh, this is the first time. Oh, so first time there. Gave a wink to the technician there. It's always uh, comforting when you're confident about that. So Cindy is going to be coming down here for Special Olympics. Again, if you want to send us a tweet on Twitter, hashtag over the edge DE. Kayla Miller is still outside posing for pictures as you can imagine her sister Miss Delaware is here and so attracting quite a bit of crowd too. That's a great family affair. The entire Miller family is here out there so we'll get Kayla on when she comes in. You can see Cindy White getting ready to go over the edge for Special Olympics Dollar. Who do we got on the side of the building right now? Uh, right now this is Pam uh, gotcha. uh, Bryson who is on her way down. We'll pick her up here on this camera. Looks like she's a little more than halfway. I would think, it, I would think at that point you feel pretty good about your accomplishment. Speed has gone up. <laughs> we, are, we are moving quicker. Yeah, and, uh, people going down and uh, some veterans here. Cindy White works for Bank of America. Thanks to Katie for getting us that information. And uh, looking here, Cindy will get ready to get going here. Pam, some of the last things. Not sure if she locked up. Nope, there she goes. Keep going again. When people lock up, it's not uh, a time to panic. It's more that they were actually moving too quickly. And so it gives them an opportunity to slow down, and the technicians then talk you through it from there. So uh, these camera angles, once again, you're getting are the uh, Jimmy Smith's Photographers Jessica Filipak, Nina Raspa, Mike Winley, Jennifer DeLuca, they've been with us all day, and they've rotated around the different camera angles, one on the roof, one out in the street, one from directly underneath, and so they've done a nice job. Pam Bryson has landed, and so her and Paul Petcho are officially on the ground. So uh, approach the little past 2.30. And uh, I don't want to say we're winding down. We still have two more hours to go with uh, several people left to go. Uh, but we're certainly at the last uh, quarter of our broadcast. It's been exciting to uh, bring th these live pictures and video and interviews to those of you tuning in from around the country and even around the world. We've had a chance to talk to some interesting people, some first-time, second-time, third-time, and even fourth-time edgers, some parents, 
some volunteers, uh, some people who are only part of Special Olympics by doing this event, and that's fine too. We appreciate their support. This is the fourth annual Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics. Dollar has raised more than three hundred fifty-five thousand dollars for Special Olympics in just three years. That doesn't count what we anticipate will be more than seventy-five thousand dollars raised this year. You can see Pam giving the thumbs up there. That's a common sign that you see people when they reach the bottom. Uh, Jimmy, I was telling people, and I've told just about anybody I talk to, whether I've been on TV talking about it or on the radio talking about it, that usually I'm at the ground floor when they land, and I try to interview people. Uh, you know, we talked about John Levine doing a great job out there doing that for us, our DJ uh, in, in my place this year. And, and nobody ever gets to the bottom and says, that was horrible, I'm never doing that again. Yeah, we've heard that a lot where people... Uh, they, they get so amped to that sense yeah. of accomplishment, and, and then they've conquered it, and they want to do it again. Yeah, and that's how, you know we're, it'll be interesting to see if we have anybody sign up to do it next year. You know, as I mentioned, for the first time ever, we actually have next year's registration live online where people can go. Might as well get, get a hold of them while they're amped exactly, up about right, it. Right, exactly. You know, it's kind of like the polar bear plunge. I've always said, you know, we, inevitably we have people at the polar bear plunge who uh, do it the next year. But I've always said, you know. The moment to do it is when they're there watching it because yeah. by the time you, you drive home, you get home to your couch, you're crazy. watching the Super Bowl, you know, wait a minute, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> you know, but if you can get them in the moment, which is what we're trying to do here. So, again, if you are interested in signing up for next year, reserve your spot uh, with two ropes. We do have a limited number of spots. We're capped at 100 people. So first 100 people that sign up will get those spots. We only need $50 today. You have all year to raise the other 11, uh, 10 $150, $1,050. Got a lot of ones going on here, <laughs> hour six of the broadcast. Um, but an opportunity to raise money. Lots of unique ways to raise money. Obviously, people can give you money. You can run your own fundraising events. We heard some people talk about the ways they've raised money that way. And, you know, as you and I were talking about, Jimmy, there's a lot of people that say, you know what, I'll never do this, but I'll pay you to do it. And so they go over. If you're part of a school out there, earlier today we had a principal. Drew Moffitt from Gunny Bedford go over. Uh, we've had teachers go over. And so if there's somebody in your school, it's a great way to raise money. And those schools, our understanding is, actually watched the production online yep. throughout the entire school this day and age. Most schools have the capability of if there's something online they want to watch, they show it to the entire school. So uh, the entire William Penn High School, it is my understanding, watched uh, Mrs. Levita Moffitt go over the edge uh, along with her husband, Drew Moffitt, who's the principal of Gunny Bedford. Levita Moffitt is the uh, guidance counselor at William Penn High School. So an example of how a school, but it can be a company, it can be an organization, it can be a business, uh, can get involved in this great event. That's kind of what I envision from this whole process is you get a, you get a class full of kids that each donate, and, and then, or you get a, an office, or you get something, and then this gives them the ability to, at work, uh, laugh about you <laughs> while, while you're on your way down. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, and that is a, uh, a neat thing to do and a neat thing to see. And uh, Here we have uh, Kayla there Miller has she just walked in. Is. We knew she would stop signing autographs at some point and come in. Why are you being so quiet us. right now? i got to yeah, get my headset. We, <laughs> and I, no, I'm going to let Jimmy talk to you, too. Don't worry. Okay. I'm going to let Jimmy talk to you, too. You know, K Kayla Miller, again, doesn't need any introduction to those of you from around the state of Delaware, uh, former point guard, University of Delaware last year. For those of you around the world, we actually have people from Canada who tuned in to watch you repel. Well, it's interesting because people from Canada, uh, people at the Blue Rocks always think I'm from Canada when I say, oh, there yeah. You <laughs> there, you there you go. And Matt Montgomery was on. We had him on the air before you uh, went down, and he was talking about looking forward to watching you repel. Now, one thing Jimmy and I were watching, and uh, you'll see the broadcast production back here and some oh, of the sure angles that we see. I'm sure you were laughing at me. <laughs> now, well, we, what we were laughing about is when they show the angle, not this one, but they show the angle where you're pulled, you're back on the roof a little bit, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, getting you ready. <laughs> you wouldn't be quiet. It was, it was Kayla Miller. You, yes. you, all you did was talk. And then... I had a walkie-talkie, too. Yeah, the walkie-talkie yeah, yeah, right. was fun. That's yeah, what I said, dance. yeah. Well, but then you get to that point where you're getting ready to lean back, uh -huh. and your mouth stops. There was no, you were done talking. You were ready to go over at that People point. People always ask, what does it take to get you to shut up? Well, there you go. <laughs> you push me over the edge of there a building. You, you <laughs> all right, so... How was it? It, w it was a great experience. Um, I didn't expect to have to use that many muscles in my body, but really? it, it was a lot of fun. I just didn't want to have to get to the point where 
I had to put my hands out, and then they were going to have to bring me down or something like that. Right. I wanted to do it myself. We were pretty sure physically you were going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, never, we never had any qualms about that or worries about that. Now, you've played in front of thousands of people, mm -hmm. thousands of people, uh, including obviously last year's run at the Sweet 16 where there was no less than 5,500 people in the Bob Carpenter Center. When you look down, I assume you look down. Yes. And there are not 5,000 people at the bottom, but right. there's a few hundred people mm -hmm. down there looking up. How, do, how does that compare? Does it compare, or is it two completely different things? It is two completely different things, however. I mean, the first voice I actually heard was John, and um, I heard him saying Kayla or something right. like that. And just thing, hearing everybody and hearing the support, I was just trying not to tear up because <laughs> it, the support, not even just in basketball, but the support people have had with me raising money and things like that. It's just incredible, and I'm forever grateful for everybody. And uh, you work for Dynamic Physical Therapy? Correct, And I, I assume do. they supported you in this call yes, in some, they in did. somehow. Yes, they did. They did. I'm w working, yeah. air quotes, <laughs> <Today>. <laughs> right now, yes. Well, that's why we'll give them a few plugs. It'll exactly, make it up, exactly, you know, that's, as a exactly. marketing person, you can appreciate yes. that. And, of course, your role with Thanks, the Blue John. Rocks. Yes. <laughs> role with the Blue Rocks. Oh, yeah. Do they play tonight? They do play tonight. I'm not working. Um... But Saturday night is Kayla Miller bobblehead giveaway I, night. I, I heard that, <laughs> and, and I'm actually going to try to get to that game. I'm uh, just praying for, for no rain. I did see them before I came over here, and oh, yeah? I, at first I thought they were going to be horrible. But my skin color is tan, so I was very happy there with that. There you go. And they got the armband, the <laughs> yes, famous armband. What do you, famous what do you armband. call that? Tattoo sleeve. Tattoo mm -hmm. sleeve. All right. Now, I know when my kids see that, they're going to want one. Is that, put, is that for sale? Yes, $7 oh, okay. for a youth size. $7, $7 for a youth. Wow. Excuse me, John. <laughs> it is the Blue Rocks. <laughs> we got a lot of friends over there. Yes. That's what we all yes. do. Uh, but anyway, who we got going over? Uh, do we know yet who's going down? Chris Attucks getting ready to go over the edge. And Nina Vera getting ready to go over the edge. And we'll talk a little bit about them here. I'm going to turn the headset over to Jimmy because I know he's got some questions for you. Oh, uh, I can't We've been wait talking about hear. you for about the last half hour. And Jimmy, so, they uh, played my song as I was coming down. Just so you know, <laughs> you're not special in that. They've played everybody's song. Well, I was hope. Well, I was hoping that, but I was also hoping it was going to be you singing again. Oh, me singing? Yes, like we did at the Blue Hen Madness night. Oh, that was. I will never sing. Well, I will again. always remember that. <laughs> Why am I blacking out here? I don't remember <laughs> this. How do you remember this, and I don't? It was at the hotel. And somebody tweeted in that they wanted to see me dance, and you were brave enough to go ahead and try uh, to start singing it. Okay. Yes. I remember It's now. also on the Blue Hens Lunch Break I, episode I do, as well. I do remember this. Now. I watch I those things this. every night. <laughs> Thank you so much. How have you been? I've been well. You've very been well. You miss it? Um, I miss the student-athlete life. I miss being around the fans, but I've tried to do as many things like Special Olympics um, events where I get to still interact with people. I'm coaching now, and honestly, I love coaching more than playing. So it doesn't fill the playing void, but it kind of opens up new things for me. Uh, obviously, I have a vested interest in, in your interest in Delaware Athletics. you check out the team this year, women's basketball at all? I did, and I was very happy for them because before the season, everybody was saying, oh, well, how's the season going to be? And I said they could actually be a top two or three in the conference. It just it all depends on how hard they work. Obviously, they worked hard, and when they're in the championship game, everybody's like, yeah, aren't you so surprised? I said, no. In the beginning of the season, I knew that they could be there. So I was very happy that they were able to kind of prove to everybody that they still have talent. What about, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this. What about your brother's team's little run this year, yes. too? It's, I, I've not seen enough of your parents over the last <laughs> three years that I've you been here. I get to continue. the Miller family, Jimmy. <laughs> I just like that I continue to get hugs from your mom. Yes, for, they, for three they, more years. they are definitely hugs. That's what do you think sure. about uh, that run and the men's team. It, it was awesome. Um, that championship game down in Maryland, though, was a little uh, too close for comfort. Yeah. Just a little bit. But my brother had an incredible experience. And Monte and the coaches did a wonderful job. And they had a lot of nice talent. Having Usher come in yep. was a big help for them. So, Do you, Is he there today? Outside? He, no. no, no oh, at the, no, I was going to say, they're at the White, at the White House. House. Wait, why oh, are you at the White House? Because I'm, I'm here. Wow. Snaps for Jimmy. That's right. Thank you. That's impressive. I've been. To the White you're House right, before. you're right, uh, you're right. Seen that. I've been in the vice president's pool. Did you know that? <laughs> I saw you go into the vice president's pool. I knew that, and I cringed every second of it. So, yeah, the men's you and basketball Coach team. Martin, too. Uh, the whole entire team did. Uh, the men's basketball team's at the White House today, so they're getting that opportunity that the women did uh, a couple of years ago, which was very, very cool. That'll be where my brother resides someday, I bet. Yeah? He's, he's on. <laughs> I'm saying it on the radio right That's now. Right. Uh, what, 15 more years he's, he's yep. eligible? Yep. Good. Yep. There we go. Um, what do you think about, as being a hometown person, a lot of people here are from Delaware, but mm -hmm. you 
you've impacted so many lives, whether it's on the court, Blue Rock stuff, uh, just being an ambassador for y you yourself, but also for things like this, to have a state rally behind something like this or, or any of the things that you do uh, when you go around and spread goodwill. Um, it, I, I'm, I'm speechless when it comes to having just all that kind of support. And Delaware is a small state. However, it, it does feel like a family a little bit. And everybody keeps asking, so what are you going to do with your life? And I would love to eventually get out of Delaware, but I don't, every time I wake up in the morning and then I interact with somebody, it's just, I don't, I could never leave this place because I love all the people too much and they've always been great to me and I don't want to leave that. Well, you've done a fantastic job. What, what you got on uh, tap for the rest of the day? Uh, I saw your sister out there. Go back to work. Go back to work. Go back to work, and then... You're a walking billboard right now. You've done, yes. you've done dynamic for dynamic therapy. physical if therapy. If anybody ever fell off this building, they could go to the clinic and get fixed. <laughs> I think um, it depends on from how high. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, go back to work, and then I have a lacrosse game. And then... Oh yeah, I'm coaching lacrosse, Jimmy. What are you doing coaching lacrosse? I don't know anything about lacrosse. I, Lee Kaminsky's one of the assistant really? coaches. Yes. That's good for you. Love her. She's so much fun. Really? Um, coaching lacrosse that's almost over i think you should not have said that you don't know anything about it well actually the girls the second day they would ask me all these questions and i would go to lee i said lee why do they always have to ask me the questions and then they go did you play lacrosse i said no i don't know anything no lacrosse isn't my forte so what what position what did what do you do tactics running coach basically yeah running coach yeah, yeah. i'm there for moral support <laughs> moral support and uh jokery that's, exactly. that's what you're doing exactly to. exactly are you coming to the blue rocks game on saturday would you believe it that uh we're going to gaithersburg maryland to be with zach kerr okay for the draft okay that's okay so i'll allow that i'll save you a bobblehead I jimmy it. i wouldn't what, what time is the game seven o'clock then i actually could make it well it's okay if you don't okay but I'm I would love to see you there. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you I would. I would love to the see there. you there. Well, it, I would love to be there. Well, you know what, Jimmy? All those people out there supporting me, I loved seeing them. However, walking into this room, I knew I was going to see John, yeah. great guy. But seeing your face too, oh, I was. It's the highlight of my day. Thank Not you. jumping off of a 17-foot. Kara was in here <laughs> earlier. She's been tweeting about you all morning. Oh, really? Kara was in here. Oh, I can't um, wait to see these tweets. She was tweeting support of you. Oh, so. thank you, Kara. She, she's my girl. Love I, that I know. <laughs> well, I'll let you go be with your family. Thank you very thank much, you, and thank Kayla. you guys for having me. It's thank great you. seeing you. Good seeing you, too. Hey, no problem. Let's switch these headsets. I know you like that one. There we go. Yeah, it's funny. You get used to a headset. It's, know, right? know, it's kind of like a pair of gloves. That's right. Nothing worse than putting on somebody else's pair of gloves. All right, going down, we have uh, thanks to... Uh, Kayla for coming in and spending some time with us. And uh, we talked about her and Matt Montgomery being friends. Matt came in with the camera. I assumed he wasn't coming to take our picture. No, nope. sure he's enough, had plenty of opportunities <laughs> to do that today. <laughs> and, and never even Something changed. It. Somebody different yeah, was in the room. You know, I don't know what it was. I was excited there for a minute. But uh, anyway, Nina Viva coming down here, second year. She went over in 2013, works for Bay Health Medical Center. She's also a second-year polar plunger. Coming down with her is Chris Attucks. This is his second year, also did it last year. He works for the Red Clay School District at the Central School, uh, which also has people with intellectual disabilities in that as well. Not everyone there, but I know they do have a, a group of folks there. So they are both in, uh, doing this. Chris enjoys sports. This just adds to it. Uh, he's done polar bear plunging. He's also done zip lining in Alaska through the rainforest. Um, wow. we, did, we, we didn't catch up with that Matt O'Byrne who went down. You know, I'm still amazed how quickly he went down. And, and uh, you know, it was just amazing. We, we watched the first quarter of his descent. We went over to Kayla, and by the time we came back, and we didn't spend any more time on Kayla than we have on anybody else until we realized when we came back, Matt was done. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and then we started looking through his biography and realized he had plunged into underwater sinkholes and done stuff like that, and we realized why that was so quick. So uh, we're going to still try to – I've still got somebody out there uh, trying to get Matt on here to talk to him about. But this zip lining through Alaska, through a rainforest. Now, Jimmy, have you done the Lums Pond thing? That go eight no, thing at Lums I've Pond. I've fished. You've fished at Lums Pond. Other canoed, than that, maybe canoed. Nothing else there. No. Uh, but anyway, the zip lining thing, as you see, uh, Chris Land there. 
the, the zip lining at Lums Pond is a lot of fun. Uh, I have to admit, uh, I've done other zip lining things. I've done a little bit of rock climbing. And, and you still get a little nervous when you, you make that first step off the platform, hoping everything works out, similar to what we've heard people talk about this. But I would imagine zip lining through Alaska's rainforest is a little bit different than Lums Sounds Pond. Sounds incredible. <laughs> it does. You know, it's one of those things, what we say people talk about over the edge. Uh, you know, the, the second time they do it is a view. And uh, Chris says he's able to raise the money he did through a pizza party at Famous Tim's. So we want to throw that out there, a couple of restaurants we've talked about. And, you know, people that are thinking about doing this, they can sign up today on the website, SODE.org. Click on the Over the Edge banner. Go on there and register today. Uh, we've talked about how, you know, people, we haven't had a lot of people say it's tough to raise money for it. Obviously, $1,100 is nothing to sneeze at. But at the same time, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it is relatively easier to raise money for something like this than maybe a 5k run or something that people do all the time this is uh, a bucket list item for a lot of people for some people it's a once in a lifetime thing they're only going to do it once and as we've seen today and we'll continue to see there are some people that have done it second third and fourth times as nina finishes up going over the edge for special olympics delaware her second year it looks like she came down slower than chris but she didn't have any problems you know what we haven't seen jimmy that we saw a little bit earlier this morning is people haven't locked up as consistently uh, and, and I say it's, all, it's not like we saw it happen 15 times. It maybe happened three or four times. Yeah, we're having, we're having people start to figure it out, start to get a little more comfortable, and I guess learn from others' mistakes. Yeah, and I think that happens. Uh, we got a, a tweet here. Jackie Sheldon, so proud of Kayla Miller for going over the edge for Special Olympics and repelling down a 17-story. So uh, a lot of people watching Kayla, uh, not only on our broadcast but uh, she certainly had a big crowd here that's why it took her so long to get in here every time we looked outside she was taking a picture with somebody as you see nina has landed and so she's excited to have uh, finished her second year her john is out there talking to her again that's our dj john levine and he is from the great american party and we appreciate him he's dj'd in the past but we asked him to do a little bit more this year and MC the event outside something i normally do but I'm happy to be inside uh, giving you this broadcast. Jimmy, what are our numbers? Uh, what are they up to as far as the number of people who tuned in? Let me pull up the numbers in? right now because we were getting close to uh, 1,900. We're at 1,866. All right, great. Uh, people have tuned in throughout the day here. And uh, 93, 93 individuals on right now as we prepare to see Walter Matthews up top. As we go off the script a little bit, he must have been a, a late addition here today. But... Uh, Good to have him on board and with us today. So this is Walter Matthews who's getting locked in right now. All right. And I've got a correction. I apologize to Chris Addicts. I don't believe he has gone down yet. It was Chris Corno, and this was something we got last minute. Somebody handed us a sheet of paper. Um, he actually was a last-minute addition. I mentioned him earlier. He raised money in 48 hours. He's a store manager for TD Bank in Manassas, Virginia. So he was the Chris that just landed. It was a Chris, but it was Chris Corno that landed down there. So we appreciate him coming up from Virginia, and we apologize. We had the wrong last name, uh, both announcing and on the computer it was uh he was a last minute addition and uh the paper got lost in the shuffle we'll be completely honest with people uh in my pile of papers here so uh anyway we appreciate chris corno going over the edge and so who'd you say we have up here right now uh, this is walter matthews who is a uh, late addition not uh not on the original timeline that i got here so he must have been a uh, somebody that's raised the money just recently all right, well, that's good. To be a part it. of in here today. Good. Glad to have Walter Matthews here. And, uh, you know, if you're watching this and thinking, you know what, I've got $1,100 I don't know what to do with, and you want to come <laughs> down and spend it, we yeah. still have a couple slot, afternoon slots open if you want to come down and take part in this great event. Uh, we've had a couple of people added at the last minute, like Chris Corner that we just talked about. And so it's not something, and that has happened every single year. We've had at least one or two people who have decided, you know what, it's a great cause. I've got a little bit extra money. Let's go down and do this. And um, I guess that sometimes those people pay the $1,100 and, and ask for donations afterward. And yeah. uh, if you're watching, tuned into the broadcast here, and you want to donate to Special Olympics, you can go to SODE.org and just donate to the general fund. If there's somebody who 
you've learned has gone over the edge or you've decided, you know what, that was pretty cool, I want to go support this particular person, you can still do that as well. Most of them have fundraising pages up on firstgiving.com. All the money goes to the same place, whether you're supporting uh, somebody who's going over the edge or just making a general donation of Special Olympics Delaware. Every dime stays in the state of Delaware to support 3,700 children and adults with intellectual disabilities who compete in 20 sports year-round for Special Olympics Delaware. We've got five soccer events coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, skills events at high schools throughout the state of Delaware, and then, of course, the big summer games on June 6th and 7th at the University of Delaware. Make sure if you've never seen a Special Olympics event, there's no event bigger or better to come watch than Special Olympics Delaware at the summer games. And here comes Walter Matthews. He's taking that step off the building and getting ready to go down here inch by inch, step by step. And as you heard John Levine announce, the MC in the background, he is a first-timer. We don't have a bio sheet in front of us since he was a last-minute addition, but it's good to know he is a first-timer, hopefully not a last-timer, <laughs> doing this as well. Once again, if you want to send somebody a tweet, wish them luck, use hashtag over the edge DE. You want to sign up for next year, go to SODE.org, click on the over the edge banner at the bottom of the page, and it can send you right to the fundraising, or I'm sorry, the registration page. All we need is $50 from you today, and then you've got the rest of the year to raise the rest of the money. I'd like to thank all of his co workers at Federal Probation and the family who's here Mariah. Carmen, Sounds like he's got a lot of family here based on yeah. the MC watching him come down. And so a last minute guy, he must have said, everybody, let's get in the car. That Daddy's going to go Let's rappel go. down a building. <laughs> so, here he comes, and back up on the roof, you see our next repeller. We'll find out who this is. Katie's out looking into who this is, getting ready to come down. And again, if you want to send us a tweet, hashtag over the edge, D-E. We'll get it to you. We'll get a shout-out for you out there as well to whoever it is you're trying to support. If you've just tuned in, and we understand we're, we're approaching the 1,900 as the number of people who have tuned in at some point today. We appreciate everybody who has taken the time, whether you're at home or at work or on your phone, uh, to tune in to watch a little bit of this Over the Edge event. It is the fourth annual. That's Mike Lariano who's getting ready to go over. You can see Mike there. Right in front of you. This is uh, Mike's one of the fourth year edgers. He's an employee of one of the sponsors of this, TD Bank. And uh, his fourth time, as I mentioned, and he wants to thank his girlfriend, Casey, his mother, and all the friends who helped support his cause, and all the wonderful supporters from TD Bank, and also JP Morgan Chase. Now, here's another guy who's done skydiving, uh, <laughs> the Spartan Race, which I'm not sure what that is. Rugged Maniac, the Polar Bear Plunge, and the Ride to the Tide. We've mentioned the Polar Bear Plunge at Special Olympics. We've talked about skydiving. Uh, the Ride to the Tide is the motorcycle ride. It happened a couple weeks ago. It happens every year. And it ha uh, takes place from either Newark or Dover all the way down to Rehoboth Beach. It's a police-escorted ride, so people who enjoy getting out on their Harleys or their motorcycles and taking a ride, there are no stops. Um, the police officers, it's a law enforcement torch run event. The police officers literally uh, hop ahead of the route and shut down the intersections and the lights. So it's a really cool thing here. As we see Walter making his way down, big I look back to the family. Big smile. And their attack able to touch him down. And then we start talking to the techs there. All right, as you can see, the tech's uh, getting Walter unharnessed here. We've been joined by Cindy White, who you heard me talk about, a longtime program director. Scoot a little closer here. Cindy, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. All right, now, was that your first time? First time. All right, now, it, is it going to be your last time? Let's Absolutely get to that. not. I asked if I could go back up and you do could, it again. If you could write a check for $1,100. <laughs> I know we got spots. I've seen the schedule. So we could get you. But, you know, it's funny. We've had, literally, we've had three people who have sat down and said, if I could go right back up and do it again and raise, you know, they would be right back Absolutely. up there. So that's great. So tell us a little bit about the experience. It was amazing. It was something like, I can't even really explain the feeling that I had, but it was the best thing ever. I got down and immediately I was like, let's do it again. <laughs> now, was there ever a point, and you can see what we see on the broadcast, and, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about how this is the nerve-wracking part when they step back. Was uh, well, How did you feel when you made that move? For me, no. The, my nerve-wracking part was more 
at the practice session. Oh, really? <laughs> Here, and I think a lot of it had to do with the people who were upstairs talking you through it. They, right. were, they were awesome. Yeah, and that's, we've heard a lot of people say that. Um, I've never done it. Jimmy, my broadcast partner here today, has never done it either. And everybody says uh, that people upstairs. Now, this guy's coming down pretty quick. Uh, I don't think you moved that quickly, but you kept moving for a first timer, which I thought was pretty Well, impressive. I was nervous. I didn't want to lock it up and have to flail my <laughs> arms or anything. It was awesome. Oh, that's great. Now, uh, you were involved in Special Olympics for years, mm -hmm. and as a program director, we went to the area level. How are you still, have you stayed involved? I am currently the Athlete Leadership Program Director for the Wilmington Wizards. It's quite an impressive title. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, and, and so, basically, your role, uh, you know, explain your role to people who don't understand um, that. My role is to work with the athletes that are on my leadership committee and getting them prepared. We go out to different events and they speak in, um, in front of people about Special Olympics and how they can people, you know, athletes can join um, special or how we need volunteers and how you know, to help us raise money for um, Special Olympics. Oh, that's great. This is uh, Mike Lariano if you're watching uh, the broadcast as we're talking to Cindy White, uh, Mike Lariano heading down. He is one of those fourth year edgers. We, uh, I mentioned to Cindy how quickly he's going down and, and I guess that's what happens when you're in the fourth year. Cindy, you ever think you'll be a four time edger? Absolutely. <laughs> you I'm are gonna, pumped. <laughs> I am. I'm going to start raising money today for next year. Well, you know what? You can sign <laughs> up and that's a great segue you're great on this uh, you know people who are excited whether they literally did it today or watching or saying hey i want to do that we have set up registration for next year already really and all we need is the 50 dollars. it's at sod.org people can click on the banner for over the edge and there's a link right to next year's registration and so we hope people it'll be interesting to see when we look at the end of the week how many people have actually taken advantage of that uh to have that done but uh you know we're thrilled that you know you've given so much to special olympics uh, you know, you're one of these people that whenever we needed something done or still need something done, we, we, need, we know we can call on you. And so it's great to see you involved in this. Before I let you go, uh, that's Nancy Gallagher, a member of the Special Olympics Delaware Board of Directors you're looking at on the screen right now. Before we let you go, Cindy, and uh, mingle with people out there, I know Matt Montgomery, obviously one of your fans. <laughs> There's only been two people that have had their picture taken in here, and Jimmy and I are not one of them. Kayla Miller was in this seat a few minutes ago. Matt came in to take her picture and now take your picture there. So you're right up there on the level with Kayla yeah, Miller, and that's pretty impressive I feel in this honored. state. Exactly. Uh, so needless to say, Jimmy and I are not at that level or anywhere <laughs> close to it. You won't see photos of us with our headsets on anywhere on uh, Facebook. But um, have you ever done anything like this? Like we've had people no. skydiving. We've had people, check this out, this one guy rappelled into a sinkhole which we had to literally look up to what that meant. Right. Uh, Katie, our, our intern, was in here doing that. And so uh, so you've never done anything yeah. even close to this? No, the only thing I ever do is uh, the polar bear plunge. All right. Now, <laughs> now, now that you've done this and you've conquered it, are you scared of heights or anything no. like that? Okay, so you, you at least you had that going for you. Uh, and and there, there you can see Mike Laureano at the bottom uh, getting a hug. That was Sarah Tomo. Uh, who uh, went down a few minutes earlier. And so a uh, hug from Sarah to Mike. They've uh, two repellers there uh, on the ground uh, talking about the experience, I guess it looks like. I know Sarah's a repeat edger and Mike in his fourth year. So very familiar, uh, both of them, two veterans there talking. Is there anything left on your bucket list that this has now made you think that maybe you would do? Skydiving? Uh, there's a lot. Skydiving, um, you know, just jumping off the edge of a cliff with one of those parasail things oh, on yeah. or something. There's yeah. a lot. I, I, have, I love adrenaline. Oh, well, that's great. You know, Jimmy and I, we've both decided we're never doing that parasailing or the skydiving oh. or the cliff hanging. I'm going to do the over the edge next year, and uh, Jimmy's going to sit in here and commentate about <laughs> me, talk about me going over. But listen, thanks for coming. It was Thank great you. seeing you again. Thank you. Uh, you know, I looked up there. I said, hey, that's Cindy White on the top of the building, and I saw your name pop up on the screen. So it was great seeing you. Thanks for supporting Special Olympics. All right, Cindy White, still having, uh, still giddy about how much fun she had. If anybody can write her a check for eleven hundred dollars, she's ready to go again right now. So, uh, all right, we got Nancy Gallagher, a member of the board of directors, up on the edge, getting ready to go over. I know she has gone over before. Mike Laureano just landed. And so Nancy Gallagher uh, started in Special Olympics. She actually worked for MBNA, for what is now Bank of America. And she started in Special Olympics as a coach. She was a very accomplished basketball player. I believe it was at Stockton College. And so we recruited her to come be involved as a basketball coach. And she literally has been involved every year since. She runs her own basketball camps. I believe they're called Nancy Gallagher basketball camps uh, in the summer and throughout the year. And so uh, she is very athletic. As I said, she has done this before. And, uh, you know, Jimmy, you watch these people kind of like when we saw Kayla there. Uh, we saw it with Sarah Talma. We talked about how she's, you know, fitness and in shape and you know it's hard to it's hard to tell the shape of some of these people uh right. you know but 
but when you you see these people that they you know a they're dressed like they're in shape. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I've decided I need to get some new outfits so I can look like I'm in better shape. I think but. brighter colors make you look <laughs> that's the case. fitter. Or so my, a little neon so, today. So my black shirt does. Uh, you're making following. Me look as you're following company lines there. Today. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, no wonder Matt's not taking my picture. <laughs> but Nancy looks like she know you know very confident, very athletic, and uh, ready to lean back. When you have and gloves and helmet on too. I think that really increases your athletic prowess makes you look a little bit more impressive yeah so nancy like i said a long time basketball coach and uh, if you ever watch nancy gallagher run a special olympics practice it you know it really is classic uh, of what and, and what nancy does is she approaches the special olympics practice no different than she does her camps or her clinics or her cym teams that i know she's coached over the years and that she she puts the same practice plan together as everybody else and then she just decides that you know this is what we're going to do and like any good coach she makes adjustments if uh, adjustments need to be made. And you, know, you talk to some of the people that have coached Special Olympics over the years who, who come from a high school coaching background or a college coaching background, and then they come into Special Olympics. I'll still never forget Ed Capadano, and that's not a name you would recognize being from out of state. But Ed uh, coached Ursuline Academy, where yep. Kayla went. Uh, I believe he led Ursuline to five state championship. Coach Val Whiting. Uh, who before Elena Deladon might have been the most impressive uh, female basketball player uh, to ever come out of the state of Delaware. And so Ed told me, you know, when he started coaching, I said, what do you do differently? He said, nothing. I put yeah. my practice plan together. I expect my Special Olympics athletes to raise the bar to get to that point. He said, but just like any Ursuline team I had, so a drill that worked with one team one year may not work the other year, and you make those adjustments. But your expectations don't change. Yeah, love of the game and, and interest and, and all that goes a long way. Yeah. It keeps focus. It keeps it allows you to, to crank it up a notch when you need to. And, and yeah, I mean, love of the game and fun and relationships and all those things is integral and, and kind of the, the, the building point, I guess, for uh, the Special Olympians and, and why they're involved in such a thing. So you kind of have that different set of love of it. Right. You know, and, and, and the relationships and wanting to be there with those people. Uh, that maybe sometimes you don't have, um, no matter where you are. There are some college athletes that are not interested in being out on that court or <laughs> field <laughs> right. or anything, even though they may or may not be getting a scholarship for it. So uh, it's incredible a testament to the interest and, and to their love of, of the sport that they participate in. Yeah, it really is. Uh, tweet coming in from Anita Reed. Thanks to everyone at Special Olympics Delaware for an awesome experience today. I'll be back next year. Anita, we thank you. Special Olympics, thank <laughs> you for being part of this awesome experience. If not for people like you, uh, edgers out there taking part in this event, it would not be in its fourth year, and we are excited to see it year after year. And uh, so we got Nancy Gallagher coming down the side of the building. And uh, we're going to keep a track of Nancy as she makes her way down. We are approaching. We are now past 3 o'clock. And, yep. Jimmy, i got to tell you, when I came on the air at, t what it was, at 10 of, I think, where yep. you said, hey, we're live, and I got on the headset, I thought, you know what, this is going to be the longest seven hours of my life. Not yeah. because it's not a great event, but right, because right. you got to talk for seven hours. you got to come up with things to say. And, you know, I, I enjoyed the, you know, it's actually the time has gone quick. Yeah, I, I mean, we and I, you and I talked like, hey, what are we going to do to fill the time? <laughs> yeah. There's been no time to fill. No. I mean, and, and obviously the reason we're doing this is for people to see the people on the side of the building, so we haven't had a lot of chances to even cut away. Right. It's been one after another after another, which is fine. It's just been it's so interesting and so cool uh, to have... Uh, to have all these interviews lined up and hear from these people one after another. Now, I'm going to ask for your headset back to me. I just got a text, and okay. I was going to confirm it, and I can see by the excitement. Katie Johnson, our intern that has kept us in line okay. and up going, she's leaving. She's leaving us now. She's going over the edge. Oh, my goodness. She is going over the edge. I got the text message from somebody upstairs that said Katie is going over the edge. She's going over for Danny Hall. Okay. Uh, Danny Hall is on that 4 o'clock slot. Danny has gone over three other times. So, uh, you know, for whatever reason, he was not able to be here today. And, and that's disappointing. Danny's a great story. Danny, as you see, Nancy continued to descend. Uh, Danny was, is petrified of heights, and, and he wouldn't care if I told you this because <laughs> I, I, told, I, told, I talk about it every time he lands. And he's gone to do this for three years in a row. He's a state police officer. He and I went to the University of Delaware together. Greatest guy you'll ever meet. He's got his family 
involved in Special Olympics. He does so much for Special Olympics with the torch run. So he can't be here today. It's got to be for a good reason. Yeah. Let, let's just hope it is a good reason and, and nothing negative. But going in his place, if I could borrow your headset for Absolutely. just a second. Uh, you know, this, we've had some exciting news today here. You've been in here long enough, Katie. You know you can't sit that far away with the headsets on. You're going over the edge. I am. You I'm, sound excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've been watching it all day, and I've been working so hard for the past few days with you guys and seeing all this great work. And Oh, I'm just speechless. I'm so excited. Well, forget the fact you're going over the edge. Who's going to take your place down here? We're not going off I the I don't know. Yet. The first thing I said to them was someone's got to call John. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Nobody ran this by me. You know how much say I have in this. All right, so you're going over there. You've been watching all the different views. You've seen the people mingling on the roof. You've seen them hanging over the roof. Uh, you've seen them doing a, a, a couple different things. And I don't know if we have, do we have anybody on deck right now, Jimmy, or would this be a good time to run a PSA? Uh, both the addicts are getting ready to go. Okay, good. Uh, we were going to try to sneak a PSA in for Special Olympics. We apologize. We haven't been able to do that uh, since early this morning. But, we again, we know you've tuned in to watch people go over the edge. And we will run some PSAs at the end. Uh, but we want to make sure you get to see the people you've tuned in to see the entire time they're there. And one of those people is going to be Katie Johnson, senior at the University of Delaware. We've said your name several times today, but we haven't talked much about you. But now that you're going over the edge, where does this rank in terms of things that you've done in your life? Oh, it's pretty high up there. I mean, this is incredible. I've told a few people I've been rappelling before, actually. I studied abroad and, and went rappelling in the Czech Republic, but it's not at this height All by right. any means. Now, it's not at this height, though, but, you know, right now people are looking at the amount of security system right. that is up on that roof. I have to believe wherever you were rappelling in this country was not like this oh not at all i mean you saw some things moving that you weren't really sure should be moving so this is <laughs> oh i can't believe it i'm very excited i mean watching all of this process i have no concerns at all so i feel a lot more prepared than some people and so to see their bravery and just to tell that it's going to be great now I'm, the big question excited. is have you texted mom and dad yet i just did right yeah. before you announced me i, I texted everybody i could and so uh, hopefully mom and dad in. text back yet or um, well i think they're on the road so they might not be oh. able to but my sister will try for them well they can watch <laughs> They can watch on their phone, too, on the app that they have there. So uh, uh, these are the Attixes getting ready to go over. Chris Attix, uh, one of them. And uh, the other Attix is Josh. I'm sorry, Josh Attix getting ready to go over the edge. We'll tell you more about Josh in a second. But, you know, Katie, this is funny. You know, it's funny because you've been in here. You know, we call right. this the war room. You've been in here and you've watched <laughs> at different angles. What part of this worries you the most? Any part? Oh, it doesn't worry me. I mean, when everyone says that when you have to lean back and they say, okay, just sit back, I think I'll, I'll definitely get a little nervous a little then, nervous. but no doubt that it's so safe that I'll lean back, but I'll enjoy it. Now, Danny Hall, according to my schedule, Danny Hall was one of two people scheduled for that last slot, the mm -hmm. 4 o'clock slot, so you might very well be the last one over. Oh, boy. <laughs> so you, you will be the guy. <laughs> close the show. <laughs> That's right. Now, tell me how this came about upstairs. I mean, did Danny Hall call, call somebody, and we, you know, we've talked about Danny Hall, what a great guy he is. Right. He does everything oh, he's special so Olympics. Sweet. I mean, no, way, <laughs> no way being, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. I guess he's going over. Yeah. You're going over with his money, right? Right. And so uh, thank you to Danny Hall for not only, uh, you know, being part of the Special Olympics year-round, but for generously giving his spot to you. Uh, did they ask for other volunteers up there, or was it, uh, no. let's have the intern go over the edge this time? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> I, I know you guys have joked about that a lot, but it, it's true. I, Kylie just came down to get me and didn't really tell me what it was about, so yeah. I thought maybe they had candy for me or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, they're listening upstairs. I got the text message that says, uh, all right, she's got to go. Oh, that means <laughs> it's time, Katie. Listen, okay, thank, thank you, you in all seriousness for all your hard work of today. Uh, keeping Jimmy, you know, with all the names, the right spot. You made our life a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> My pleasure. And I still have not seen anybody walk in the room, Jimmy, who's going to replace Katie yet. <laughs> not that she's replaceable, but we, we <laughs> might be uh, sinking real quick here with names. So uh, Katie Johnson, University of Delaware senior, off to go over the edge. So she is headed upstairs right now. We've gotten the text message that we were holding her up. So she is on the way up uh, there right now. So we've got two other people up here. We are getting down toward the uh, last couple slots here. Nancy Gallagher is going over. We've got Chris and Josh Attucks. This is Chris uh, this here. Is Chris, there you go. Getting ready to go over. And I talked a little bit about Chris. We apologized already. We had the wrong last name because somebody jumped in at the last minute. But Chris uh, Attucks is the, his second time. He's in the Red Clay School District at the Central School. And he does have a relative. Uh, who uh, has an intellectual disability, and he also works with a lady with Down syndrome, so very familiar with uh, this, this population that Special Olympics serves. And uh, he's done the polar bear plunge, and he was the one we talked about who went through Alaska in the rainforest. And so uh, 
Chris Addicts getting ready to go over the edge. Josh Addicts, and uh, we're not sure. I don't want to assume they're brothers. They could be cousins. I don't know. Uh, we're not sure. But they I just heard uh, outside uh, MC, father-son. Oh, there you go, a father-son. We've had a few father-sons go over. Uh, this is the first one today yep. that we know of, and I, I think we would know if there was somebody else. So uh, Josh Addicts uh, isn't scared. Uh, all right, Josh is the son. Um, Josh, Josh's first experience, his dad is Chris, who's the second year edger. So we just want to make that clear. Uh, Chris is the father. Josh is the son. Josh is going over for the first time. Chris for the second time. So an example of father recruiting son. And you can and tell the difference here. <laughs> you can't see who's gone over before and who's a little leery. Or maybe not. Hey, you can Actually, see our first upside down. Around. Yeah, yeah, first upside down one. He'll get himself fixed. Without a problem. Josh did say his dad is his informa- inspiration, most giving person. He knows he volunteers for the Challenger Little League game at the Blue Rocks for the last 10 years. And so he's uh, being able to go edge by edge, side by side with him will definitely be a memorable moment. Wanted to thank everybody, including his dad, for the fundraising. Uh, Josh has done bungee jumping from 150 feet, and they've apparently both done the polar bear plunge. So the father, son, Josh, and Chris Addicts going over together. You can see... Chris uh, waving his hands there. That means something. I, yeah. He's trying to signal to somebody. I just can't figure out what yeah, it is. Yeah, he's pointing to somebody in the, you know what, he's probably at the 10th floor. Uh, my guess is the 10th floor is kind of where things are headquartered today. That's where everybody checks in, and uh, that looks to be about where the 10th floor would be. And my guess is he's waving to somebody who is in there, uh, letting his son catch up to him there. Yeah, that's all Josh it was about. catching up. And you can hear the MC, uh, John Levine, there in the background. Again, we appreciate John uh, has, has done this for a couple years, but from the Great American Party, that's his business if you're looking for a disc jockey for something. Uh, John's been great to work with, uh, very smooth, very flexible when we've needed things at the last minute. So you, we're glad you're able to hear his uh, powerful voice there in the background emceeing today's event. And so the Addicts father-son combination getting ready to land. And we see Chris there on the right making his way down. And with a little more pace here. Father knows best and he lands first. Let's see. And Chris Addix has landed first. And he is down now. Open for his son right there to follow shortly as they get Chris all squared away here. Happy smile there. You know, it's, it's that moment, and uh, we talked about Cheryl and Sarah Tamo earlier. Sarah, uh, Cheryl, my colleague, and who went over last year watching her daughter descend and land, and I, I found out from another colleague she breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> as safe as it is as a parent, you're, you always feel better yeah. when, they, when they, you know, if they're doing something somewhat dangerous that they do make it, and uh, I'm sure we'll see a father-son uh, handshake or hug here. Coming up here. Once again, if you want to send somebody a shout out on Twitter, it's hashtag over the edge DE. Email us info at sode.org. If you are uh, want to send us where you're from, where you're watching from, the furthest we've heard from is Toronto, Canada. And so we can officially say people are listening from all over the world here, as you see. This is Josh, correct? Yeah, correct. Making his final descent here. And we've got somebody popped in. I'm going to find out who this is. Chris Corno has joined us. Chris went over probably been, what, 45 minutes or an hour ago yep, from yep. Bay. And, Chris, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. We had the wrong Chris when you came down because oh. you were a last-minute thing. But yeah. we, we straightened it out, and I'm sure anybody who really wanted to see you, they yes. knew it was the wrong Chris. They were just making exactly. fun of me for saying the wrong name. So we got your name out there and who you are and what you do. You're a last-minute guy. You jumped yes. in here at the last minute. Tell yes. us about that. How would that come about? Well, the funny story is uh, at TD Bank we have a – uh, corporate mm-hmm. um, initiative right. to support the Special Olympics every year. And um, in our market, which consists of Virginia, Maryland, D.C., and Delaware, um, we had an aggressive goal, and we achieved it. And then kind of the 
push over the edge, right. pun intended, <laughs> was, <Good promo. laughs> yes, thank you, <laughs> was to um, raise additional funds so we could be part of today's activities with Over the Edge. Right. And um, I thought I would hear about it, and I kind of caught it at the end, right. and I asked my senior leadership team, what can I jump off of? I remember <laughs> last year they jumped off a building. Right. I'll take anything, a bridge, a mountain, what can we do? <laughs> So Rosemary, who's the regional market manager yep. of yeah. Delaware. Member of our board of directors. That's actually. correct. Yep. She reached out to me, and within five minutes, it was all put together. And my store um, in Manassas right. came up with um, our – we exceeded our goal of a $1,000 donation. Gotcha. But then I thought, well, I've saved 1300 Does that count? And they said, well, it's actually 1100 to jump. And I was like, how much time do I have? Right. And they said 48 hours. I was like <laughs> – well, it took me about four weeks to come up with 1300 <laughs> This will be a push, but I like a challenge. There you go. So um, I dropped the kids off at school this morning and made a four-and-a-half-hour trek. Good Lord. And jumped <laughs> off a building, had a soda and a sandwich. I'm going to head back tonight. Oh, there you go. And that's Valerie Chris you're looking at there. Um, and, uh, you know, Chris, you were part of uh, Lisa Smith, the event director here, just right, gave me the numbers. 76 people. Gone over one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars, one hundred and sixty-two. Wow. Jimmy, I've been saying we hope to get over seventy-five thousand. We did a little bit Whoa. better than that, and that means uh, this event has raised nearly half a million dollars in four years. And it's That's guys amazing. like you, Chris, who have been able to do that. So thank you for your support. That's a yeah, you know, you're a great story. We've we've talked to people tune in wow. throughout the day, and people have been jumping in and jumping out and yeah. you know, wanting to see people. And so uh, we think the reach that this event has made has been tremendous. Absolutely. And when we can report numbers like that, that just becomes really phenomenal. So uh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you're part of TD Bank. One of the major sponsors of this event have been for thank the past four years. And, Absolutely. Uh, thank you for making the drive thank and being you. part of this great event. And again, we apologize. We had the wrong last That's name. That's okay. We had your first name right. But Those who know me would be able to say... That Chris isn't as good looking as the Chris Corner that <laughs> I know. There he is. That's so right. I think that will set the record there straight. There you go. Perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> so that's funny. Plus, I don't have a big ego, so they know that. There you so. go. All right, great. Well, Chris, we appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you very stand. much. Thanks I've really enjoyed myself. By. Hope we see you back next you year. You definitely will. Come the night before. It's cocktail hour. TD Bank does. Perfect. We'll have a lot of fun. You don't perfect. have to make the long drive. Thank so. you very much. All right. Thank you, Chris. Bye, guys. All right, again, once again, Chris Corno made the four-hour drive. That, I don't think anybody else drove That's, four hours to be part uh, of this extremely event. Extremely impressive. <laughs> Two great pieces of news there. There's the, the personal story that he had. Yep. And that number right there. Wow. 76 people have gone over the edge today and yesterday. $117,000. One, uh, and 162. Every dollar counts. Funds raised for Special Olympics Delaware. And so uh, thank you, uh, those of the, obviously the edgers who raised that amount of money. People can still give, whether it's to Special Olympics through the general account at SOD.org, or if you realize that somebody you know actually did this event today, uh, you will be able to, uh, you know, still give to the organization or to that person on their firstgiving.com page uh, for that. So a uh, great thing. Again, and congratulations to 76 edgers raised $117,162. That's just a phenomenal number. Jimmy, I'm going to let you talk for a second while I tweet that out. I All think that's right. So great. That's very, very important information. So uh, we'll give you a chance to take care of that and spread the good word there. That uh, Valerie Christ you're looking at right now, and uh, the lady that will be joining her is Carol uh, Breeding, who will be on the blue rope on the gold rope right there is Valerie, as they will begin their trek down the 222-foot tall building here at 300 Delaware Avenue as Valerie starts to go down. And we'll switch to the from below angle there as you see them at the very top of the building begin their descent. So there is Valerie on the right. On the left is Carol. And there's a look at her as she gets ready to go. Carol's doing the no hands check that we've seen many times here today. Remember, if you want to interact with us, hashtag over the edge DE. You see that in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. 
also find Special Olympics of Delaware on Facebook, facebook.com slash SO Delaware, where you'll find photos, videos, all that from this event on the Facebook page and the homepage of Special Olympics of Delaware. As we are approaching the... Now we can call it the home stretch. According to my sheet, five more edgers. There have been a couple other additions, so it may be six, uh, could be eight. Uh, here's hoping we're here all night, really, because that just means that more money was raised. And as you heard John just say, uh, over the edge today has raised one hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and sixty-two dollars all around this event and all around this trek down the building. It's such an impressive number. Yeah, it really is. Uh, two people coming down right now as we uh, see on the left, uh, Carol Breeding. Carol uh, had, had a sister uh, who participated in Special Olympics Maryland, unfortunately passed away this past fall. But Carol has been a longtime volunteer for Special Olympics. She actually runs a program down at Milford Central Academy. She was excited to uh, go over for the first time. And next to her is Valerie Christ. Valerie's a repeat edger, works for MBRS Financial Bank. She's a volunteer for Special Olympics, and she's very inspired by uh, all Special Olympics uh, athletes who participate yep. year-round. And uh, she wanted to thank Aberdeen Rotary and their members for helping her reach her goal of coming down over the edge. So uh, Valerie Christ on the right and Carol Breeding on the left. As you said, we are uh, winding down here. Uh, weather has basically been perfect other than a few sprinkles early on. And uh, so uh, the, we have no uh, fear of any delays at this oh, no. point, which is always a good thing. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed today's broadcast. Probably several of you have just tuned in. We realize nobody probably has tuned in for the entire seven hours. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we hope you have enjoyed watching. Whoever it is you tuned in to watch at this 2014 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. Again, a special thank you to our sponsors, TD Bank, Brandywine Realty Trust, Delaware Law Enforcement for Special Olympics, and also our contributors, Sheraton Suites Wilmington and the Delaware Rock Gym. Everybody has helped make possible the $117,162 that have been raised for Special Olympics Delaware. Every single dime of that stays right here in the state of Delaware to support our program of sports training competition. Shed a little light, and you may not know the exact dollar amount, but the, how does that compare to previous? Uh, you know, I was just I was just going to say I believe uh, that is. It's very close to the most amount of money we've ever raised, but certainly you know, our numbers are a little bit lower this year. A number of participants, and you never know. You never know, and you never try to guess why. Right. Uh, you know, let's say we have 15 less people than last year, but that number is as high as last year when we had 96 people. So that goes back to people like Kayla Miller who raised two thousand yep. dollars, and other people who raised two thousand dollars to get that uh, special video, and and just people you know like Chris who we just talked to who decided you know what this is such a great cause I'm going to raise. Yeah. Eleven hundred dollars in forty-eight hours, right. and drive four hours. You yep. know, it's one thing to raise the money, but then, then you drive, hours, and you yeah. come up. Yeah, uh, talking about what Carol Breeding's done. She's done some parasailing, and she's done the polar bear plunge. And here's the funny thing: what have you? What other unique wild stunts have you done? And she puts teaching middle school. Wow, <laughs> there you go. So that's, that's kind a challenge of in and of itself. Yeah, there you go. So uh, anyway, she, like I said, very dedicated and uh, going actually in honor and memory of her sister, Laura Bowman, who I mentioned passed away in January and was an athlete for Maryland Special Olympics for several years. So Carol Breeding and Valerie Christ. This is Valerie right here approaching the final floor. And now has landed. There she is. All right, down, and uh, I know we're looking here. We haven't seen Jason Stevenson go over yet. He's a fourth-year uh, person. Valerie Christ, I'll mention she was, had the video incentive, which means she raised at least $2,000. So, uh, as you mentioned, Jimmy, we are down to the final few here. Uh, and what's been, you know, it's been seven hours, but it's gone quick. Yeah, it really has. <laughs> and it's uh, been exciting that it has, and... Uh, you know, I want to thank you, Jimmy. Obviously, the production here that you put together is just unbelievable. Uh, it's never been done. We're pretty confident in Over the Edge anywhere in North America where they run their events, certainly the first time here in Delaware, and it's been a resounding uh, success from what we've heard, and that's due in large part to your efforts and the planning process, your camera crew, and I'll mention them again before we get off the air. And, uh, you know, I also want to thank you for chipping in and being part of the broadcast team. Yeah, I, I knew you were an experienced broadcaster, yeah. and so it's great to have somebody to talk 
talk to, and uh, you know, we've both done play-by-play -play and color for sports at different levels, and it's always easier when there's somebody to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I knew, um, I didn't want to say you were in trouble. I just knew that it was going to be taxing on you, and you have other responsibilities here today, so uh, anything we can do to pitch in, and I feel a little bit more in control. I, I'm actually wearing three headsets right now. <laughs> I can see that. You got a lot I'm, of wires. I have a headset <laughs> so I could talk to all the cameras. I have another headset so I can hear that the audio that, that we're producing is right. going out over the stream. Right. And then I have the headset of the original audio between you and I. You need so, a third ear. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot <laughs> right now. So And the headsets were a great idea. Yeah, you, we yeah. swapped out the microphones. We decided yeah, I didn't uh, think that was our arms were going to hurt holding I the thought microphone for maybe it was going to be me holding it. And I was like, nah, I think I'm going to switch <laughs> these out. Uh, so that was a good move there. All right, uh, Car is that Carol who has landed? Carol has landed. We're going back, back up, top. up top. This is Susan Forbes. All right, Susan Forbes. She was actually scheduled officially to go at 350, so she's actually a little bit ahead of schedule. We uh, we talked about they do try to keep pretty much right on schedule uh, for the people going over, but at the same time, if somebody's ready and ready to go, they get them up there to go uh, because it is important uh, for them to keep moving in the event their rain were to move into the area or something like that. Susan Forbes works for herself, self-employed at SKF, which I assume stands for Susan, whatever her middle name is, K. Forbes Enterprises, managing short-term and long-term projects and events, including fundraisers. Wow, she's uh, going to be part of this. Um, she is not a, I assume she's a first-time edger because she didn't say she wasn't. Uh, she's always wanted to try and get the opportunity to have this adventure and raise money for Special Olympics. She's always wanted to repel. And as you heard, uh, Katie Johnson, our intern, yep. who's going to do this at the last minute, uh, she, who has repelled in other countries, uh, certainly not with the safety measures in line as there are here. So it certainly makes it a little bit easier decision. Now, she has been a polar bear plunger, and here's another one. I did a tandem skydive as well as rode in a glider plane. Now, you and I have talked about the tandem skydiving. Neither one of us is ever doing that. No. Um, but a glider plane? No. That's, to me, that's like the Wright brothers, right? Didn't they start in a glider plane? Yeah, I mean... And it didn't work out too well no, for the glider uh, part. No, you're actually just progressively slowly falling. <laughs> yes. I, I don't really... And with no control of right. where. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. It's, it's a paper airplane, right really. There, yeah. I mean, it's not going to go back up. <laughs> and if it does, it's so forceful that you really don't want to be a part of it. So. No. No, this is... I mean, I, I roller coasters, no. Looking over the edge of this building earlier this you did morning, that. very reluctantly. <laughs> uh, I think that second story ledge where we had to kind of reroute a cable this morning right. was a little bit much. I, I don't know. This is definitely something I will not uh, shy behind. That I am. This is scary. This is definitely <laughs> scary. I think what uh, where that camera is right now, this angle that you're looking at, right. it's back up. It towards almost the middle of the, the, the roof, right. so you don't really feel like you are, because you don't see the ground, you kind of see it in the distance, right, so right. Um, it, it kind of really makes you feel a little more sturdy, um, and I know my camera people have actually fallen in love with the opportunities. We take a look there you go. at uh, Andy Manning. Andy Manning getting ready to go. That was Ruth Coughlin. I was pointing to her on the left there. Ruth went over early, our staff member. Uh, you just tuning in. Uh, you probably weren't on the broadcast when she was, but one of our staff members. A little nervous about going over, but she did it. Uh, we got a tweet in from E. Delaware. Excellent job with the event. Fantastic job all day. That's a shout out to you and the production team there, Jimmy. Awesome, awesome. fundraising results. And again, if you just tuned in, our fundraising results are $117,000 have been raised for Special Olympics Delaware. And that's thanks to 76 edgers who have gone over, a couple guys who were added at the last minute. And Sue Poley, a longtime volunteer with uh, Law Enforcement for Special Olympics, uh, for Special Olympics Dollar, has joined us. She has taken Katie's spot as Katie has gone up over the edge. Sue, I don't know if that means you have to go over the edge after Katie or not. She's shaking her head. No, I will take that as a no. And so, as we mentioned, we have Andy Manning and Sue Forbes getting ready to come down over the edge. So uh, another one, Jenna Harrison, so much fun and for such a great cause, tweeted us in there from T-A-R-O-D-O-E-H-T. Bum that I didn't get to see my dad repel, but apparently he went pretty quick. Yeah. At least he landed safe. Uh, there you go. And uh, we did have a couple people who repelled quickly. You know, our camera, we didn't spend any more time, or we certainly made every effort not to spend any more time on any one person over another coming down the building. But, you know, the reality of it is we had a couple guys come down real quick, and we would start uh, on them panning down, and then all of a sudden we'd go to the other person coming down, and by the time we got back to that person, they were done and down. And so uh, if that happened to somebody, and I said I think it happened to maybe one or two people, right. uh, but we did see them at some point, whether it was on the roof 
or on the ground, and we certainly tried to talk about them. But uh, another one, RCHD, good luck, Jen. All the charitable housewives are rooting for you. I think I read that one already. So, again, you can still tweet us, hashtag over the edge. DE, we'd be excited to hear from you. And once again, the totals are in $117,162, which means this event has raised more than $470,000 for Special Olympics. We think we're going to be over 2,000 people who have watched this today as you see Susan Forbes get ready to take that first step back off the ledge, which uh, no matter who we talk to, uh, pretty much it's a unanimous decision that that is the most difficult part and despite uh, once you do that it gets a little bit easier it's still not a piece of cake going down but you can see Susan looks pretty confident there and uh, the techs have done, just done a tremendous job uh, making people feel comfortable coming down and the players on the bottom who have been with us all day just a wonderful group this over the edge uh, crew that puts this event on for people all over North America it's not just an event obviously here in Delaware but if you want to rappel down a building in the city of Wilmington which means the state of Delaware, because let's face it, the only place there's buildings this tall are up here in the city of Wilmington. You're going to have to do it for Special Olympics Delaware. Uh, they own the rights to this event, and so it's going to be your only chance to do it. You can sign up today for next year. Next year's event will be on May 14th, 2015, as you see Susan take her first steps back. And next to Susan uh, coming down, uh, who was that again, Jimmy? I we had Susan Forbes and Andy, Andy Manning. Manning. Thank you very much. Coming down. But, again, if you want to sign up for 2015, go to SODE.org, click on the Over the Edge banner, and then on the Register for 2015 all we need is $50 today, and then you've got the entire year to raise the other $1,050 to be part of this great event. If you've been uh, on the air with us for more than just the last couple minutes, you've heard people talk about what a great experience it is. Uh, First-timers talking about already doing it next year. Fourth-year people talking about doing it for a fifth year. And so, obviously, it is something that people want to do as they go on. And so uh, we appreciate the people that have been sending us in tweets throughout the day as well as their comments. We've enjoyed being on the air with you. We are down to our last few edgers, and uh, we believe the grand finale is going to be Katie Johnson, uh, intern with Special Olympics Delaware, a senior at the University of Delaware. She'll be uh, getting her diploma in a couple weeks uh, there. And, uh, you know, it's... Katie's replacing a longtime volunteer and a longtime edger who had to back out at the last minute, uh, but said, you know what, I'm still committed to giving the money, so pick somebody to go over. And <laughs> most people would say, well, let's make the intern do it, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, you, those of you who heard Katie, we made her get on the headset before she went up, and she was pretty excited. There was no make no. <laughs> in, this, in this situation. She's very much uh, all over that, so... Uh, she ran into the room. She did. I'm sure there was more running than what she just did <laughs> around in that corner. As we take a look at there, it's Susan towards the bottom and Andy uh, up at the top as he's going to go hands-free. Just to, I guess they're proving the point. Hey, we got you. That's right. We got you. And, again, Andy's a fourth-year edger, so he's a uh, he's one that he can uh, – he knows what he's doing. He works for the Delaware Natural Resource Police out of Cape Henlopen State Park. Uh, you've heard us mention a torch run as a longtime supporter and sponsor of Special Olympics Delaware. And he is part of that torch run. He's on the executive board, the Sussex Eastern Lake Coordinator. That torch run will take place this year, June 4th through 6th, with a kickoff ceremony Wednesday night uh, in Rehoboth Beach at 7 o'clock. And I'll be thrilled down there to be part of that. It is a really, really neat event, as is the entire torch run. Uh, but that kickoff ceremony, there's just something about being in Rehoboth Beach on a warm summer evening and watching that torch with literally hundreds of police motorcycles and cars escorting it out of Rehoboth on its 160-mile journey. So uh, a Andy Manning, of course, very familiar with Special Olympics. Wanted to thank friends and family who supported this cause. Wanted to thank the good people at 16 Mile Brewery in Georgetown, Delaware, for allowing Jason Stevenson and him to hold a benefit as a uh, fundraiser, which actually got them over their goal. You see Susan Ford has landed a first year one she did pretty good once she got going i was quick yeah and it was quick and it was pacey and she didn't lock up uh so very quick i actually heard the, the text down there go that was a quick one coming in hot there <laughs> yeah so uh great job by susan forbes uh smile on her face there at the bottom and there's andy manning a fourth year edgery looks like uh you know he's one of those guys it looks like he's taking his time looking down enjoying the view this is taking it in yeah taking exactly. it in 101 i have a feeling i'm going to be if I'm going a little bit quicker, it might be accidental, or yeah. it's going to be to get to the bottom a little yeah. bit quicker. So uh, Andy Manning coming down. We're down to our last few edgers. We'll try to let you know. Uh, we're assuming Katie Johnson, our intern who stepped in at the last minute for somebody, is going to be the last. But 
we will try to find that out from upstairs. And as we've promised, we will have a Special Olympics clip for you at the end where you'll get to see all the images of Special Olympics and what has made this uh, broadcast so special for us to be able to reach out to so many people. We'll give you a final count of the numbers of people that have tuned in today. We can tell you we have raised 117000 $162 for Special Olympics. 71 edgers today. Five media folks went over yesterday for a total of 76 people. Again, yesterday from WDEL, Rick Jensen and Melanie Armstrong. From WSDW, Gina Paletti. And from Cool 101.3, Dana McDonald and Steve Mons, also representing 105.9 News Talk. 222 feet, 17 stories, 76 people. That's a lot of, of feet covered. For 170,000, 17,162, bringing the total over $470,000 for Special Olympics in what is now the four year history of this event. We've already talked to a lot of people who plan to come back and do this again next year. If you are interested and you've watched what's been going on, you're excited to see what's happening here and you want to become a part of this exciting event next year, go to sode.org, click on the Over the Edge banner, then click on Register online for 2015 and you can get signed up that's jason stevenson another four-year veteran for over the edge getting ready to go over him and andy manning from downstate they kind of fundraised together they mentioned the 16 mile brewery who allowed them to raise the much needed money they need also pizza king fat daddy's barbecue heritage shorts golf and country club and Quillen's Signs. So lots of people, in addition to our supporters, TD Bank and Brandywine Realty Trust, for uh, putting on this event, the sponsors, the official sponsors. A lot of our edgers have, uh, you know, we don't want to call them co-sponsors, but they sponsored their own plunges individually, and that's kind of what makes this event neat. Jason, as we mentioned, in his fourth year, works for the Delaware State Police out of Troop 5 in Bridgeville. He's a longtime torch runner, power lifter, and or volunteer, and recently as a powerlifting coach. He is the 2014 Torch Runner of the Year. And so he will uh, not only get to go over the edge today, but on June 6th at the Bob Carpenter Center at 5 o'clock is the Summer Games opening ceremonies uh, for that uh, for the opening ceremonies, and Jason will get to walk in or run in the torch and meet Elizabeth Nolan, and they will light the cauldron to officially open the 2014 Special Olympics Delaware Summer Games. So Jason Stevenson has started his descent. Jimmy, I have a feeling this might be a quick one. Yeah, he looks <laughs> uh, relatively experienced in such a thing. And let's see. Here he comes. We Although, time him? you know, and, and, and but as we've talked about, timing doesn't always mean everything. He may want to take his time and go over and enjoy the view. We've You're had right. a lot of people tell us that, that the second time they slow it down a little bit and they really enjoy it a lot more than they did that first time. So Jason Stevenson locked in, ready to go. And now begins his way down. All right, Jason, making his way down. We're down. We know we have at least one more going over. Katie Johnson I who have spent the day with us. Two, I got, yeah, actually, you're right. I think we might have, because uh, Daniel Hall has been replaced by right, Katie. By Katie. And, uh, one more on there other than Katie. So we'll it's see. Matt, we'll yeah. take a look up at the activity up on the top camera. I don't see anybody but Ruth walking around up there. <laughs> Ruth taking pictures. She's going yeah. over the edge. She's done her... Uh, does she have her vest on already? She's I know. got everything on. We kid about that. The people in our <laughs> office who are going over the edge, they wear their vests in the middle of summer <laughs> to come in and show it off. But they should. And, uh, you know, give the credit not only to the Special Olympic staff that have gone over, but the hundreds of edgers literally who have gone over. 76 today and yesterday as part of Media Day. Five went over and uh, over the years several have gone over. So 117,000 raised for Special Olympics Delaware if you're just tuning in toward the end of our broadcast. Uh, we are at the 300 Delaware Avenue building in uh, on Delaware Avenue uh, owned by Brandywine Realty Trust. And uh, if you're nearby and want to come get a last glimpse, there still are a couple of people that have to come by. Uh, two more edgers to go, we believe. And so uh, come by and take a look, check it out, uh, or obviously if you're listening, you're watching it live. But, you know, as, as great as these pictures are, there's still nothing like looking up that building, oh, the side man. of the building. This is much more controlled. <laughs> yeah. We're very comfortable. Yeah, yeah we're very great. comfortable. I'm already trying to figure out how I'm going to get out of doing this, this next is... year. But, no, I mean, it, it, it's an exciting event. Uh, as I talked about having done this, this now our fourth year, and talked to a lot of people who have come down at the bottom as the MC of the event outside, nobody has ever told me that was, that was a bad idea. I'm not doing that again. Right. And it's not to say everybody comes back. Yeah, that may, now, to be honest, that idea may be going through 
a person not of Jason's caliber, but at right. around this point. Right. And then right. by the time you get a little bit closer, maybe that's already out of your head. Right. So yeah. it maybe crosses through your mind, but definitely not when you land because there's just that euphoria. Yep. And yeah. definitely not going to turn and tell you, all oh, this was terrible. And, and, and somebody said it, and I forget who to credit, but it certainly wasn't me. It, it was like a, it's like a roller coaster ride that you was you're too a short. little bit trepid. It was too short. Yeah. Was that you that came up? Uh, no, that? no, I would never say that. <laughs> too long. Um, I think it was... Was it all the way back to, like, Alejandro this it, it morning? It was early, yeah. I think it was Alejandro. I think you're right. Alejandro gave us that great footage uh, off his GoPro yeah, that we that saw great. earlier today. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just a great great day as we wind down here. Jason Stevenson coming to the end. Send us your tweets if you're still in tune with us. Hashtag over the edge DE. Uh, let us know what you like, didn't like about the broadcast as we're uh, always looking to improve, having done this for the first time. And from what we understand, nobody in North America has ever uh, done a stream online live of Over the Edge from start to finish, or even uh, in de- as in-depth as we have done. We know a couple states have done some uh, interviews on the roof and uh, shown them down at the bottom to people standing uh, who wouldn't obviously be able to see it live, but uh, nothing to the extent that Jimmy Smith and his crew have put on for us today. The people behind the scenes that you don't see uh, or don't hear about, camera operators Jessica Filipek, Nina Raspa, Mike Winsley, Jennifer DeLuca, and, and have certainly done just a fabulous job. Our MC outside from the Great American Party, uh, John Levine, excellent job by him jumping in uh, to handle the duties that I usually take care of out there. So we appreciate what he's done out there for us as well. It's just been a, a wonderful day that's not over yet. Uh, we believe we still have Matt Rahi, and I apologize if I mispronounced that. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And Katie Johnson who is going to be going over in place of Dan Hall. Dan Hall it would have been his fourth time going over. Uh, he has graciously donated his rappel fee to Katie Johnson to give her the experience of going over the edge for Special Olympics Delaware. Uh, excited to do it. Wasn't uh, in any way pressured to do it. Uh, excited to be part of it. So we still got two folks to go before we wrap up. Once again, a 2014 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. Jimmy, it's quiet. It looks kind of barren yeah, up there. Uh, We've been thinking this was going to happen more often. I think Katie, <laughs> maybe Katie's getting cold feet. Oh, I hope not. I hope not. They, we, they're going to blame us for holding her up down here. <laughs> we made her put the headsets on and uh, and do it that way. So, uh, hey, do we have a quick PSA we can throw up yeah, there? Yeah, let's throw something up uh, here. To let Pick a poison. Say they, they're probably tired of listening to us. Yeah, let's go. Sounds good. got two repellers left we have confirmed that that is katie johnson you see getting ready to dangle over the edge and katie was uh put into action here at the last minute as you've heard jimmy and i talking about her all day she was with us all day uh providing updates on what was going on who was doing what and enabling us to get the names food she served lunch at the perfect hour she knows i like to eat early she was perfect for that and uh, made sure that she took care of everybody down here in this room and so uh it's she was excited uh, Jimmy, they could offer that spot to you. 
and I don't think they would have met with the same would amount you, of enthusiasm. Who would do this then, John? That's, that that's would true. be my good, defense. Good point, good point. Uh, so anyway, Katie's getting ready to go over the edge. She was very excited. She's a senior at the University of Delaware. She'll graduate in a few weeks. Uh, she's been a wonderful intern with Special Olympics Delaware. She's been a lot of fun to be around. She's a great cook, too, Jimmy. You haven't, had, uh, you haven't experienced that. We literally, at least once, if not twice, sometimes three days a week, there's a baked good on that center island. you got to start stopping by more often, at least in the next couple of weeks. There. She looks like she's done this. Now, she said she's done some rock climbing. What country was that in? Oh, boy. She, somewhere she studied abroad. Anybody remember? Right. I've got Cheryl and Gary behind me watching here on the Internet. It doesn't I can't matter. Remember. Right? Yeah, rock th- yeah, right. Rock climbing is rock climbing. Do it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember that. And so, uh, you know, this, this is going to be something that's uh, going to be a neat experience for her. I, ho- I hope her parents and sister, she texted them as soon as they knew she was going down. And I hope that she was able to get a hold of them so that they're watching. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, if you're watching, we can't say enough about your daughter and the great job she's done with us. And uh, we don't take any responsibility for her doing this. This was completely <laughs> her decision. And she uh, wanted to do this. She was excited to do it. And... Uh, if we're still on the air when she comes down, I want to make sure we get her in here, which uh, we probably will be, depending on how quickly she goes down. There she goes. She's taking that seat back. And everybody we've talked to said once they take that seat back, they have complete confidence in the rope. She's also, you know what, we've seen a lot of people, Jimmy, do this, even the second and third time peepers. At this point, there's not a lot of smiling going on. No. You know? But look at her. She's, She's all smiles. It. You know, piece of cake going I, down there. I will let you know as we, as we got to Katie. We've also reached uh, over 2,000 people here live wow. today. So we've had 2,000 people tune in, and uh, we appreciate that. Appreciate the comments that have come in supporting the people that have gone down and uh, congratulating uh, Jimmy and his uh, crew on a great production today. Uh, seven hours on the air is a long time, and uh, they've managed to pull it off and done an exceptional job. And Matt Rahi is up, and he's going to be coming into our view at some point here. I'm not sure if they're going to try to let him go down together or whether Katie's going to go down by herself but the final two people once again our total 76 people will have gone over 117,162 funds raised that means we've we're about twenty thousand dollars away from raising half a million dollars for special olympics delaware in this event alone if you still want to donate go to the special olympics website page and click on donate at the top and every dime you put in stays right here in the state of Delaware. 3,700 children and adults with intellectual Looks like she's talking to somebody. Ruth's holding the speakerphone up. Yeah, there's interviewing her. So uh, Ruth's getting the photo. Ruth, of course, went over earlier uh, in the day, and she got her rappel out of the way. We had her on the air, and it looks like she's getting uh, some uh, final thoughts from Katie before she heads down. And like I said, you know, we, we had a lot of people excited, Jimmy, that, that came through here today. Nobody was more excited than when Katie. We no. got the word from up top. Uh, Gary Samaglia, our colleague, my colleague from Special Olympics, actually sent me a text. Katie is going. Right. And I, I didn't know what Katie is going meant. My first, uh, when you first said it, I was like, she got a job. Yeah, and that's what Fantastic. I was trying to go. Where, you know, but Where's she going? My first reaction was going to be, she's got to finish oh, her job to here today. She did a great <laughs> job with us here today. And, uh, you know, I was more concerned with if she was going repelling, who was going to do what she's been doing all yeah. day because uh, she's been great. And now she does get a chance to go over the edge. And uh, I know my colleagues would agree with me. You know, we, we, we've had a lot of great interns, and we actually have a couple right now. Uh, but Katie is right up there at the top of the list of people who's just done a great job and a great person uh, to be around. So uh, we're, we're excited for her that she's going to have this opportunity. And I tell you, she hasn't stopped talking. No. Since she's it's very over the Kayla edge. Miller-esque. Yeah. And a little uh, bit of scaredness, though, from Kayla. Yeah. She's really. Katie's, yeah, she's talking away. She's talking to everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I know she was trying to get a hold of her sister to have her sister uh, tune in. Might be what it is. Well, yeah, and maybe, uh, or maybe it's her mother trying to talk her down off the ledge. But uh, if anybody that knows Katie is tuned in, let us know. Uh, she doesn't talk this much in the office. I mean, she's very, very personable. But I would think hanging over the edge of a 17-story building, she wouldn't talk uh, so much. So uh, I want to thank Shanna O'Malley for tweeting in. Can't make it over the edge. You can still watch the last few Brave Souls repel 17 stories online. So we appreciate who, who that, Shana. Who tweeted that? Uh, Shana O'Malley. That's my fiance. Oh, there you go. Shane O'Malley, uh, Jimmy's getting ready to go over the edge this summer. <laughs> wedding, and, and the good news is, Jimmy, and if your fiance just tuned in, yeah. we have good news. There's somebody that went over the edge earlier who rappelled down a sinkhole. In Playa del Carmen, Shane. In Playa Shane. del Carmen. We're and not so, doing that. <laughs> we're we're uh, hoping that Shane has got that on the uh, list of things oh, no. to do on the honeymoon. I think we're going to go to the Mayan ruins, I think, is on the list. Uh, that, that might be as far as quite, we yeah, It doesn't sound quite as exciting. I'm not going to rappel down them. <laughs> rappelling down a sinkhole. But no, definitely. <laughs> Not. 
All right, well, Katie's still talking. You know, filming her now. This is a big production. Yeah, it's not like we haven't been on the air long enough. And here she <laughs> is. She's still talking to somebody. That's Ruth, uh, who we talked about being in, uh, having gone over earlier, a colleague who went over, a parent of a Special Olympics athlete. And it, it almost, uh, you know, Jimmy, it looks like she's at a press conference. Every time I look at her, she's putting her face somewhere else and talking to somebody else. She's had a video camera in her way and a microphone and... So she doesn't. She certainly does not look nervous at all. I hope I look that calm next year when I go over. Little salute. A little tip of the cap. See if you can get her to wave. She's just ignoring the camera. Now I wonder if she'll go with the no hands thing because she commented oh, on a yeah. couple people that she saw on one of the 400 images you have on your computers here that we see about somebody doing that. And so we'll see if uh, see if she goes the no hand like she's running out of people to talk to. She grabbed her walkie-talkie to talk to somebody there. They're going to straighten that out. Let me see if Matt's up there. I mean, we're enamored with her. Let's give Matt a little yeah. face time here. What? All right, we just got a uh, text message. She is waiting for Matt to go down. Okay. So, uh, okay. So we'll, yeah, uh, I just got we'll confirmation that they are waiting for Matt. All right, good. Matt's going through the training. Those so, uh, who aren't aware, when you gotcha. go up, you check in, you get all harnessed up, you get a little training on the 10th floor, and then they take you upstairs, and you go upstairs, and you actually rappel off a, a one-story structure. And we've talked to several people, including starting with Irv Levin, a longtime supporter of Special Olympics. He was the first guy to get over, the first guy we had on the air after his plunge. And he said he was a little nervous going into it. And he said the uh, he felt much better after he did that one-story rappel <laughs> off of that building. And uh, we'll see next year if I do it, whether that when I do it, whether that makes a difference or not. So uh, waiting for Matt Rahi to get up there. With, uh, you can see the pan out there, they've got one empty rope, and Katie's waiting patiently. And, you know, I'm not sure, Jimmy, at this point whether I'd be glad it's not time to go over yet or I just want to get it over with. It maybe starts to creep in Psyche out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure well, she was ready to go, but. She, she looks fine. Yeah, she looks fine. Well, there's Matt. All right, there's Matt Rahi getting ready to go over as well. So our final two. Matt Rahi and Katie Johnson. Katie, our Special Olympics intern, going over for the first time. Matt Rahi has gone over one year before he went over last year. He works for Delaware Probation and Parole. Supporter of Special Olympics Delaware. He's part of the Law Enforcement Torch Run. And he hopes to try to enjoy the view this time. It says the first time he went as fast as he could down the building. And not the first person to say that. Wants to thank his friends, family, and coworkers who donated and supported him. Uh, he's also a polar bear plunger. And this will be the third year that he runs in the law enforcement torch run, the 160-mile trek across the state of Delaware to the Special Olympics Delaware Summer Games. If you're interested in learning more about Special Olympics Delaware, please check out our website, SODE.org. Whether you have someone you know who would be interested in being a Special Olympics athlete, you could be a unified partner, which is a peer without an intellectual disability who plays on the same team or volunteer to be part of Special Olympics Delaware. Always looking for coaches. No experience necessary. We do all the training. But if you are an experienced coach and looking to get back into, you know, you get that itch, you get out of coaching, want to get back in, we got the place for you. So check it out at SODE.org. The final two edgers are up on the building. Katie Johnson and Matt Rahi are going to head down in what has been a very, very successful day. They are the 75th and 76th edgers. Over $117,000 raised for Special Olympics Delaware. There's the view. You can see the sun has come out a little bit more. Jimmy and I were talking about how the weather today really has been perfect. Uh, even though we're not outside, we're inside. We've been kind of monitoring a little bit. And, uh, you know, if, you, if it's sunny all day, by this point in the day, everybody's hot, especially the people on the roof. So uh, we're glad the rain held off. There is a picture where you can see the sunshine that has come in. It's almost like the building is creating a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a shade for right. those down in the landing zone. Uh, but definitely up top, yeah, uh, if I remember, probably gotten warm. If I remember correctly, at about this time of day, the sun has, like you said, allowed the landing zone to disappear out of it. But it's uh, still on the roof, yeah, oh needless yeah. to say. And so those people, including our camera crew that's been up there all day, it's been a long day for them. So you can see them uh, getting Matt strapped in again. He's a repeat edger, went over last year. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, 41% of the people that went uh, over the edge today and yesterday have gone over before. The rate 
across North America, from what we understand, hovers right around 5% of people doing it a second time. So uh, that's, a, you know, hats off to the technicians that over the edge who make people feel so comfortable in doing this. And, of course, the organizers of this event that make it such a smooth process. Uh, Rick Jensen went out of his way to uh, uh, send me an email and talk about uh, how well taken care of he felt yesterday uh, by the crew from start to finish. And that includes every step of the way uh, from when you head up in the elevator to when you land at the bottom and then head back up to check out. So there you see Katie Johnson on the left and Matt Rahi on the right getting last-minute instructions. Uh, those are the tech guys on each side and our colleague, Ruth Coughlin. You can see Ru Ruth is only up there to take pictures, and I use air <laughs> quotes when I say only because she's a lot braver than you and I, Jimmy. Uh, but you can see, you could see there in that picture, she literally is harnessed, uh, tethered to something being up there. And so uh, yep. they take every safety measure as uh, seriously as they can up there on that roof. And, you know, as you said, uh, you were up there, and, and it can be daunting. It is. It is very daunting. Let me uh, grab a uh, quick little check-in here from the social stream on U on uh, Ustream, which is where people can live chat there to the right uh, if you are watching the broadcast on Ustream itself. A couple check-ins from across the country. We had uh, one from Michigan. Uh, they were checking in for Gene Beck. Um, and they were uh, another group checking in for Be uh, Becky Mishler out of Columbia, Missouri. Wow. And then we also had another group uh, watching from the uh, Atlanta at the National Down Syndrome Congress. I believe right. we got a tweet for that one earlier. Yeah. And then also uh, we got one from Columbus, Ohio. Wow. So we've had Toronto, Missouri, Ohio, Michigan, Delaware, Virginia, all over. Maryland. Now, Ohio, that's where you're from, I believe. Correct. Right? Not Columbus, though. Somebody uh, related to you? No, no. I, I, I don't have anybody in, in Columbus. i um, from Cleveland. <laughs> Not Columbus. Gene Velata has uh, chimed in. At hashtag over the edge de katie matt gene and john are watching you rock we also love your pastries though so we're not oh, the only ones go. that uh like katie's pastries. pastry so shout outs gene velata uh katie said she tweeted everybody she knew in her book uh or texted that she was going over so we hope we have several people uh tuning in from there and we certainly agree with you with the pastry something tells me jimmy's going to be stopping by a little bit more often the next two weeks yeah it must sound like i'm running out of time you're right <laughs> yeah she's yeah we hope she hangs around all summer uh, but here she goes on the left, and Matt Rahi on the right, getting ready to go down. He's a repeat edger. Katie, of course, doing it for the first time. And uh, it looks like they're both seated. Uh, you know, they've done that lean back. Can we, there we go. I was going to say, can we get that view? And there it is. And so they, they've had that experience of uh, leaning back, and that is the point that we're told by just about anybody uh, who comes on the air with us or we talked to before or after the event, that once they've done that, and they feel the security of that, that rope. And here goes Katie. She's going no hands. First time, no hands. I'm sitting here with Gary and Cheryl, who both went over for the first time last year. And I didn't see anybody with no hands up there. And, and I haven't gone over, so I can't make fun <laughs> of anybody. And I'm trying to remember if Sarah did a no hand thing. I can't remember whether she did or not. But uh, Cheryl's daughter, Sarah, who went over for the second time today. So Matt is on the way. Uh, Katie's probably still talking to somebody based on what went on before this. So that's all she was doing was chatting. And so uh, she's going to start her way down here. I don't think she's got any qualms about going. Like I said, I've never seen somebody so excited to go over the edge when she found out she was going to get the chance. There she is taking her step back. Jean Velata's following her. Anybody else there uh, who's following Katie or uh, classmates at the University of Delaware, send us a tweet, hashtag over the HDE, so we can give you a shout out there. She heads down there. She goes. You see she's got the uh, Special Olympics staff shirt on. She spent the majority, actually all day until the last hour with us, uh, making sure we had the right names for the right people up on the screen and just did an excellent job keeping us coordinated up here. And there she goes. And she is on her way. Our last two repellers, numbers 75 and 76, raised more than $117,000 for Special Olympics Delaware. Katie on the right, Matt on the left, heading down to end what has been just a phenomenal day here at the 300 Delaware Avenue building uh, for this wonderful event for Special Olympics Delaware. And here they come. One last time coming down to this event. Again, sign up for next year, SODE.org. Click on the Over the Edge banner and then on the link to register for 2015. All you need to do is give us a $50 deposit. It secures your spot for next year. And spots are limited uh, with two ropes. We have 100 spots that are available. And basically, the first 100 people that donate that $50 as their registration fee, it's their spot 
uh, and then they get a year or however long after they register to raise the rest of that money. So don't think you need the $1,100 up front. It's the $50. And, uh, you know, Jimmy, while these guys are coming down, this is the first time you've ever seen this event. And yeah. although you've seen it from a screen, you get the same perspective, and you've actually had the advantage that uh, I didn't have the first couple times I watched it was from the ground. And all I saw was, as I always joke to my wife, I saw 75 rear ends yep. come at me. But you've seen it all. What's your thinking, uh, you know, about this event that you've seen? Very cool. And, and, and uh, you go up there, and I really wish we had uh, more cameras to put all over the place <laughs> so you could see kind of behind the scenes of the the mounting and the anchoring. And the, right. when you go up there, I mean, here, I'll pull this shot up right here, and, and you see this. Wow, yeah. Yeah, that's reassuring. I feel better. Fairly reassuring. <laughs> and then you see this, and uh, I don't know. So, uh, no, it, this is very, very cool. And, and obviously today... Um, I don't want to champion this as like a technological, you know, masterpiece uh, from the streaming side. But this went so well, so happy at how well this has gone. A couple things, you know, we can add. A couple things we can do. Uh, right. We kind of had a couple things on the fly. Alejandro, yeah. uh, early on, very early, it was yeah. like 9 o'clock, right. uh, he went down at 9.30. He goes down with a GoPro, and we just said, hey, can we get the footage? And we throw yeah. it up. So there's yeah. a lot of cool things that, that just kind of randomly happen, and, and, and we can, um, you know, increase the broadcast quality with. But... You know, you and I talked, how are we going to fill seven hours? We were thinking maybe, maybe more towards eight or nine that right. we were on. Um, this has flowed so smoothly. It's been very interesting. I, I mean, a lot of people have interacted. Um, you know, the hashtag's been used a lot. The, the social stream's been used a lot here. A lot of people have watched it. Yeah. A lot of money has been raised. So, I mean, you can't you can't knock any part of this whole thing. It's been absolutely incredible. Uh this is great. Yeah, it, it's really busy. And, you know, hats off to you, not only for jumping on the air and being part of the broadcast most of the day, uh, but, you know, you mentioned that GoPro thing. And, you know, we, we can't do that without you behind the scenes. If somebody had brought me that GoPro thing, I wouldn't have <laughs> known what it was. I, I don't know what an iPod is. I actually, uh, I actually had to take the memory card that was in it and plug it into my phone <laughs> and then plug my phone into the computer. So uh, my brain works pretty crazy pretty sometimes. Pretty quick with that, yeah. Um, well, but, there's Katie uh, swinging away from the building. And, uh, Matt Rye, you saw him as well so our final two repellers uh for special olympics delaware the over the event edge event raising one hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars matt and katie land almost simultaneously jimmy gives them a round of applause from inside you can still see a crowd out there watching and uh katie's got to feel good about herself and uh, you know, at, at this point, Jimmy, this is what I would like to do if it's okay with you. I'd like to run a couple promos yeah. and let give people a sense of what Special Olympics really is. And then I want to come back and bring at least Katie and if not Katie and Matt in to talk them and kind of wrap this thing up and finalize it. Uh, I think Katie would be a great example, somebody thrown in at the last minute uh, by her own choosing and being able to uh, talk about it afterward. It was senior year and the whole school was cheering for her. And just seeing the smile on her face, people were crying and people were cheering. Seeing how the whole school came together just for her was the most amazing thing ever. Special Olympics is acceptance. Joy. Respect. It made me feel better about myself being around thousands of people just cheering me on and it was a fun experience, trust me. Special Olympics is about life and being accepted by everybody. Special Olympics is health. Education. Sports. It's made me who I am today. It's made me more outgoing. It's made me just more of a genuine person. When I got involved with Special Olympics, it, was, it kind of like brought me out of my shell. And it's not about disabilities, but it's about celebrating their abilities. When I was in fourth grade, my teacher told me she would never answer my questions because I had too many and I was too dumb to understand the answers anyways. After joining Special Olympics, I know that's not the case. I am just as smart as anyone else. It has helped me a lot to be fearless, you know, in the real world. Special Olympics is community. Special Olympics is friendship. My friends I've made through Special Olympics are the best people I've ever met in my life. It had gave me a chance to meet new people from different states. And you just gain an entire family of new friends. Special Olympics is dignity. Justice. Empowerment. 
I truly realize that what I'm doing is for a great cause. I could spend all my time just working with Special Olympics and I would love every second of it. It makes you feel like a wonderful person and your life changes forever. I've made a difference. Now it's your turn to make a difference. We are champions together. Making a difference every day. Our son Matthew, he's a Special Olympics athlete. He comes out of or, uh, uh, Mary, Campbell Mary Campbell Center is his uh, home team. Great coaches at Mary Campbell. We love everybody there. Go be how to be brave. How can I love the night? How are you feeling? I'm so pumped. I really am. I'm I totally think I'm pumped. a little more nervous, but I'm pumped. I'm excited. Yeah. All right, let's go through everything one more time. <laughs> yeah, you're on TV there. Look up and there at the camera. Red. Yeah, that's all right. Katie Johnson, uh, was it everything you thought it would be? Oh, and more. Yeah? I was incredible. And so you enjoyed the experience? Loved it. All right. Now, uh, in scale of 1 to 10 for your internship experience, where does this rank? <laughs> I mean, you guys give me a lot of great jobs, but I think my job of going over the edge was... That oh, was great. Topped it off. Surpassed everything else. All right, yeah. now we noticed in a bunch of uh, a staff, uh, you know, and we, and we know we think you, we think you're great, but we were watching you up on that up on the roof, and all you did was talk. I mean, <laughs> Kelly there, was, there, there was a phone at one point, there was a video camera at another point, and so you know, all you were doing was jabbering about this event, and it, and then it looked like you were getting ready to go over, and then they wanted to wait so Matt could catch up. Did that make you more nervous, or didn't well, it matter? I actually, so they got me ready and secured everything, and they're like, okay, now lean back. And I was like, oh, I want to ma wait for Matt, and right. that's okay. <laughs> and it was kind of one of those moments where I probably should have waited a little bit before then to tell them that I want to wait, except when go. I was hanging over the edge. So, um, yeah, Matt and I were talking a lot before we went up, and it just seemed right for the last two to go down together. Now, so. we noticed you went with the no hand strategy. I up did. There. Now, is that something you thought through ahead of time? We, you know, we, we commented that you had seen people down here doing that. And right. So, is well, that something I saw you a couple. Ahead? But up there, it made them. They made it sound like everyone did that. So I was right. like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then they're like, "Not everyone does there we that." Go. All right. So you told us before you went up that you'd done some rock climbing. Where's this yeah. compare? Oh wow. Well, this was a lot higher, and I didn't have to use as much upper body strength. So that's always a plus. I mean, my guns are huge, but <laughs> they're not that big. Now uh, I know you sent out the uh, text to your parents before you went up. Did <laughs> yeah. they text back before you went down? They didn't. We no. called and left a message. I think they might be in the car, but my sister. If she's still watching, uh, I got a hold of her. So. Oh, well, that's great. Well, yeah. listen, we're glad you got the opportunity to do it. We said it couldn't happen thank to a nicer person. So and thank you again for all of your course. help uh, uh, the today, all day long. My we appreciate pleasure. it. My so pleasure. go enjoy. Uh, I know you've got people, <laughs> peeps you want to see <laughs> and uh, things you want to do. So go ahead and do that. We're going to wrap up our broadcast here. And uh, I'm going to grab uh, some material here. I want to thank again. This was the fourth annual Special Olympics Delaware Over the Edge event. Of course, Benefit Special Olympics Delaware, sponsored by TD Bank. Brandywine Realty Trust. Our final numbers, 76 people went over the edge, raised $117,162 for Special Olympics. Also supporting this great event, Delaware Law Enforcement for Special Olympics, Sheraton Suites, Wilmington, the Delaware Rock Gym, our DJ Jason Levin at the Great American Party, uh, who was out there all day. Uh, Jimmy, you and I, you know, we had a long day on the air. Well, very yeah. rewarding, but it did go fast. Uh, John Levine was out there uh, in the West. Yeah, that's uh, right. did a great job. You heard him in the background uh, most of the day. And really, uh, you know, what a great finish to a great day. You see the 300 Delaware Avenue building there, and it was just a wonderful day. Uh, Bonnie Smith just tweeted, watch most of the day. Kudos to everybody involved. We appreciate that. Uh, had over 2,000 people yep. uh, checked in, and that's, uh, you know, if you had asked me, 
at 9 o'clock, how many people do you think would check in? I'd say, you know what, I'd hope you figure there's 75 people going over. Let's say everybody's got five people who's going to tune in. Yep. You do the math. It doesn't yep. come no. to 2,000. And uh, we talked about throughout the day that Special Olympics Delaware is the first group to do this live online on the Internet. Uh, we want to thank Jimmy Smith and his camera operators, Jessica Filipek, Nina Raspa, Mike Winsley, and Jennifer DeLuca. They just did a great job today. Uh, you know, anytime you do a first, yeah. You always expect things to go wrong. And, you know, I can be on, I'm here in the operations room, and I don't think anything went wrong. And, and I'm not sure there's a whole lot I would change. I'm, I'm sure no. you're like a coach. You've got a yeah. couple of things that you're going to want to do. There but. are a couple of things that bothered me, but uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody noticed. Uh, the thing, the analogy I always like to use, if, if, if everything's smooth above water and it's still kicking <laughs> under, you can't see under. So There you go. So, uh, Jimmy, I can't thank you enough. Uh, thank you for It's the been wonderful working with you, you, and I'm already looking forward to next year. And uh, that's going to wrap it up here from the 300 Delaware Avenue building. Once again, 2014 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware, sponsored by TD Bank and Brandywine Realty Trust. 76 Engers go over the edge for Special Olympics Delaware raised $117,000 uh, and 162 so over $117,000 to get more information on Special Olympics, including how you can sign up to be an edger in 2015. Visit our website at SODE.org. Once again, for Jimmy Smith, I'm John Busby. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you on May 14th, 2015.